This evening, we're going to do a few songs. We're going to do two songs together to get started. I don't know if the, the words are on screen or not, so if you know the songs, we'd appreciate you singing with us. This is not a concert, this is worship. You know, if you don't know the songs, fake it, okay? <laughs> That'd be great. In my wrestling and in my doubt in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to show Safe to show Safe to show Safe to show I won't feel what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing my God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. You are my lighthouse, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Fire right before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire right before us. You're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Hey! Fire before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Fire before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining through the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore, oh, 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 oh. safe to shore. If you would like to stand, you're welcome to. If you want to sit, you're welcome to. Do what draws you close to the Lord as you worship. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found. Blessed be when I'm found in a desert place. I'm found in the desert. I walk through the wilderness. I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes. 
praises in the Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name For the sun shining down on me The world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name And the world marked with suffering There's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. worship the Lord. Here in this place, all are welcome. Here in this place, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here, the worries and the wanderers can call on God by name. Here in this time, we can remember all the ways God has graced us. Here in these moments, we are reminded that God is with us always. Here are gathered those daring enough to step out of comfort into the unknown. Here in this faith space, we will find the courage to cry out, God save us in every situation. Here in this place, all are welcome. Let us worship God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Ever present God, wherever we go, you are the great I am. You are with us when we are surrounded by professors and students in crowded lecture halls. You are with us when we toss and turn late at night in our dorm rooms. And now, as we begin a new school year, with many uncertainties, adventures, highs and lows ahead, you walk before us, reassure us, comfort and guide us. Make your presence known to us this day as we lift up our songs, give our voice to our deepest joys and fears, Soak in your word and faithfully respond by sharing your word on the campus, in the community, and in the dark world for all to see and hear. For wherever we go, on the brightest of days and darkest of nights, we long to follow you and to feel your presence. Amen.
When Jesus appeared to his disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. Jesus granted them a blessing. We are invited to share that same blessing, reminding each other of the peace only Jesus can bring. So we say to one another exactly what Jesus said that day. Peace be with you. Take a moment and offer greetings to one another. Friends, every so often we have the opportunity to uh, celebrate the sacrament of baptism during our worship time on Sunday evenings. Sometimes that's when we have a student who's uh, decided to be baptized, who feels that sense of call. Uh, This evening we have a a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the baptism of a baby, one who has uh, been chosen by God to come here and fall sound to sleep because... (laughs) totally out. And so her parent, or his parents are Westminster alums, and I think we're missing dad. The other one had to go to the restroom. So. <laughs> It'll be back. Let's see if we can just skip this and come back. So I'll talk as we prepare. This will be memorable because of that right there. <laughs> So they're back. So today we celebrate this baptism, and uh, it's a wonderful time because this whole family has gathered here from the north and the south and the east and the west. And so uh, it's great to have them here. And um, so I invite you to, uh, to listen and to worship together as we do this. Scripture tells us that there is one body, one spirit, and one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is above all and through all and in all. We too are one, each one of us called and claimed by God through the sacrament of baptism. Whether we come from the east or the west or the north and the south, wherever we call home, wherever we put our focus in life, that may be part of who we are. But it's not the whole story. We we have come, we may have come good, we may have, we may have good and bad memories, joyful celebrations and difficult histories, some we are grateful and grateful for, and some we cannot escape. But that's not the whole story. We may have fears and doubts, victories and celebrations, but that's not the whole story. No, our story is wrapped up in God, a God who claims us in these waters, these waters of baptism that cleanse us. God reminds us that there is nothing, not even the stain of sin that can haunt us, separates us from the divine love that's offered to us. In baptism, we are joined with Christ's death, and we participate in Christ's resurrection. So today we do a baptism not because we are part of the church, but we are part of the Church of Jesus Christ, but we're not a church. We are a chapel on this campus, and we come from different places. So when we celebrate the sacrament of baptism, we do so on behalf of a local congregation. So today, on behalf of the First Congregational United Church of Christ, I present Avery James Renninger to receive the sacrament of baptism. I'd like to invite his parents, Carissa and TJ, to come forward, along with uh, sponsors, who are Angie Redlinger and Nathan O'Connor. 
guys come. Amelia, we're so glad you could join us. <laughs> so as we stand before God in this gathering, Carissa and TJ, I ask you this, uh, these questions. <clears throat> Do you desire for Avery James to be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your children? And for those of you that are gathered, we represent the Church of Jesus Christ, the Congregational Church, First Congregational United Church. And so on their behalf, I ask you this question. Do you, the representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Avery James by word and deed, with love and prayer, Encouraging Avery James to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of the church. Do we? We do. I invite you to now stand with me as together we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed that are going to be behind us. I, I lied to you. We're going to do the words together, okay? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Oh, missed a line there, sorry. <laughs> uh, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So we celebrate this baptism. Avery James Renninger, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You indeed are a child of God. I'd like to introduce him to the gathered folks. Amelia, would you take a walk with me? Would you take that risk and do that? She doesn't think so. <laughs> but we'll do it anyways. So, Avery James, child of God. He knows the folks who are on this side. We have grandparents and aunts and uncles. Let me introduce you to these folks. Someday you'll be just like these guys. Grown up and go away to college and be loved by your parents and your grandparents and folks from your home congregation who will support you and love you and pray for you every day because that's the charge. When we're baptized, we're chosen by God. And because of that, we're not alone in that journey. We're in it together. And so together, we rejoice and we give thanks. We give thanks for this little guy and for his parents, who I've known for a long time. We give thanks for his sister, who's going to be a great big sister and help him grow up. I've already seen that happen. He's going to walk on this campus because he lives nearby. He will do it, believe me. <laughs> he will sleep on this campus, like many of you. <laughs> He's so beautiful and special, God's child. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, we call upon you now to bless this young man who's been touched by the waters of baptism. We pray that you will give him a divine purpose. 
We pray the blessings upon his parents, Carissa and TJ, and his sister Amelia. Bless Avery, Avery James with water, but also bless him with the Spirit, your Holy Spirit that will guide him in life. May this water be, see, be the seal that he needs to know that he is always loved by you. So we pray all this in the name of the triune God, three in one. Amen. Okay, congratulations. I have something for you all. sing worship with us. One of the best things you can ever do is baptism. Thank you for letting us be a part of it tonight. At your name The mountains shake and crumble your name the oceans roar and tumble and your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out Lord of all the earth Shout your name, shout your name Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise Yahweh, Yahweh We love to shout your name, oh Lord And your name The morning breaks in glory your name creation sings your story and your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry out I challenge you shout at this time Lord of all the earth we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. There is no one like that God, we will praise you. God, we will sing, we will sing, there is no one like God, God, we will praise you, praise you, there's no one like God, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Almighty God, you have filled us with the light of the Word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of faith shine in all that we do. Help us to rejoice and give thanks that this day is sacred through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. We want to thank the New Creation worship team who are here this evening for helping us out with worship. In the academic schedule, we only have a, a couple weeks, and so it's really hard for the choirs to pull their act together so quickly, and, and it's just a pleasure to have you all here and participating. And um, what you want to know is we've got Chuck Joel, who's a pastor down in Newcastle, and his son, DJ, CJ. And uh, Brandon, uh, who is part of the group as well, they're missing several, so I told them we would invite them back for uh, the whole crew to be here. Uh, part of the Labor Day crunch that we feel sometimes on campus. And uh, Brandon is probably one of the most important people in my life, next to my wife, of course, uh, because Brandon helps us keep our pool under control. We were just talking today, Brandon, how not one time this year have I had to come get my water checked. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll see. Please join me in prayer. Loving Lord, as we hear your word this evening proclaimed through music and readings and prayers and, and uh, declarations of faith and through the sacrament of baptism, we give you thanks. We pray that you would open our minds and hearts up to your word so that we might be faithful in the ways that we respond. Take us from this place, hearing this message, up, out into the world to share the good news. In your son's name we pray, amen. So during these first couple weeks, we're going to be looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And so last week we talked about the gift of time, and there's 86,400 seconds in every day. How are you using your time? Did you study? Did you pray? Did you spend time in reflecting, taking a walk? Every day. It's time that we have that we can't save for tomorrow. We can't give back. It's all ours. And so how are you using your time? The writer of Ecclesiastes is uh, often referred to as the preacher. And the preacher is thought to be King Solomon, who was old and was reflecting on his life and all the things that were going on. And so in chapter th three, we find reflection, reflections of the movement of life. For everything, there is a season. And then it just is a litany of things that he's reflecting on. I want to jump down a little bit tonight and talk about the power of laughter. Because when you go through a week where perhaps you wanted to take a walk and shed a tear or two, laughter is a good thing. It can get us where we need to be. So we're going to begin with a video. Huh?
The power of laughter begins when we're young. Somehow we lose it with time, which is unfortunate. So we're going to see if we can get it back. I need some help here. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Let's see who are the smart folks in the room. First question. This is a biblical question, so Bible scholars. Let's see how you do. Why was Noah the best businessman in the Bible? He floated his stock while everyone else was being liquidated. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it, it gets better. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Why shouldn't you pass gas in church? Because you have to sit in your own pew. Josh, this one's for you. What do you call a sleeping nun, sleepwalking nun? A Roman Catholic. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, now, next Sunday night, we're going to have the folks who went to Alaska as our Sunday night speakers. And so... Uh, if they were here, and Sarah's here, so Sarah, this question's for you, and, and let's see how you do. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. <laughs> I should just quit. <laughs> Humor and laughter is a natural medicine for us. It allows us to be healed when we need it. Laughter may not be able to cure cancer, but it can surely lighten the sadness and the confusion and the hurt and uncertainty that comes with that disease. Humor probably cannot help you when you leave here if you aren't lucky enough to find a job right out of college. But it can surely ease the load that comes with the, the self-pity that comes from not feeling like you're worthy when you don't get that job right away. Humor may not be able to stop all the craziness and inhumanity that's going on in the world, but it can certainly serve as a reminder that the best and the most humane possibilities that endure in us as human beings. There's a lot of funny things in life. Children laughing like the video, me chasing my dog around the neighborhood. Um, there's a lot of funny things in life. Have you ever noticed that there's no egg 
in eggplant? Have you ever noticed that there's no ham in hamburger? That there's no pine nor apple in pineapple? Language. English muffins were not invented in England. French fries were not invented in France. Boxing rings, rinks are not round, they're square. Unless it's an octagon, so it's almost round. Not that I ever have watched any of that. A guinea pig is neither from Guinea, nor is it a pig. So language gets us that way. There's a reason for every season under heaven. A time to laugh, even if it's at our words, or if it's at a video, or if it's at something funny that just happens in your dorm. We find evidence of laughter throughout the scriptures. The first one that comes along is the, the story from the book of Genesis, the story about Abraham and Sarah. Here's what you may not know, or you may not remember, is that Abraham is told that Sarah is going to have a boy. Now, Sarah is a little advanced in age at the time, and Abraham's pretty advanced in age, but they're going to have a boy because they need to have a boy. It's really important. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 17, it says that Abraham fell face down, that he laughed and he said to himself, will a son be born to a man who's a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And so Sarah laughed to herself and as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? In chapter 18, verse 13, it says, Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh at me and say, Will I really have a child now that I'm old? Sarah was afraid in chapter 18, verse 15. So she lied, and she said, I, I didn't laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. In chapter 21, verse 6, it says, Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And then what happens? Sarah has a baby boy. And his name is Isaac. Anyone know what the word Isaac means? Isaac means he laughs. He laughs. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25, we find these words. She's clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. And Luke 6, 21 in the New Testament says, Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. For every season, there is a time for laughter. Researchers at the uh, University of Michigan uh, did some research, and they came up with it, it, that the average child laughs 150 times a day. 150 times a day. What do you think? Does that work, Carissa? Pretty close. How often do you think an adult laughs every day? Take a guess, someone. Don't look it up. You can go up a little higher. You can go up a little higher. Go down. Go down. 15. 15 times a day. That's all we laugh. I don't know about you, but when I'm really stressed out, I like to laugh. I can feel the pressure kind of go off my shoulders as we tell stories about different things, about one another, even about ourselves. Laughing helps us feel better. It helps us get back and going again. At the beginning of this little message, I talked, I said these words. I said, humor is a natural medicine that we simply have to have more of. Laughter may not cure cancer, but it surely lightens the sadness and confusion and the hurt and the uncertainty that comes with it. Humor may not help us secure a job, but it can help you as you work through the, the load of self-pity and hurt that you're going to feel as you wait and wonder and worry. Humor may not be able to stop all the craziness in humanity, but it can serve as a reminder of what we're about. 
And the anatomy of an illness, a perceived, as perceived by, a patient, by the patient, Norman Cousins tells of being hospitalized with a rare crippling disease. When he was diagnosed as incurable, Cousins checked out of the hospital aware of the harmful effects that negative emotions could have on his body. Cousins reasoned the reverse would be true as well. So he borrowed every movie projector that he could, a movie projector, and then he prescribed his own treatment, consisting of watching Marx Brothers films and old candid camera reruns. It didn't take long for him to discover that 10 minutes of laughter provided him with two hours of pain-free sleep. 10 minutes of laughter could provide pain-free sleep. Amazingly, his debilitating disease was eventually reversed. And after the account of his victory appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, Cousins received more than 3,000 letters from appreciative physicians throughout the world. The power of laughter. Friends, as you move through the stresses that come with these first few weeks, laugh. Take time to laugh. Surround yourself with the funniest people you can find. Have good fun. That's good fun. Go to events on campus. If they bring in a, a comedian, take the risk and go. And laugh. I love watching America's Got Talent. My favorite presenters are the comedians. They just make me laugh or the magicians who do amazing things, and I laugh with wonder. And for those few moments, I can forget all that's going on around me, all the concerns that I have for students and for your families, all the things that are going on in our family. I can forget it all for just a few moments. And so I've decided that those few moments don't just come from the comedians and watching those shows. They come from God. Give credit where credit is due. They come from God, the one who provides for us a season for everything. Everything. So take advantage of laughter. So I'm going to leave you with one more. Why couldn't the chicken find her eggs? She couldn't remember where she'd laid them. Peace be with you. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of reflection. Living God, our souls thirst for living water. Open our hearts and minds to your world this day, so that like the Samaritan woman, we have a grace-filled encounter with you, the living God. Amen. sit and say, do what it is that draws you closest to the Lord this evening. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near and I will fear no evil for my God is with me if my God is with me Then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm, through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. No, you never let go of me. I can see.
light that is coming from a heart that holds on. Glorious light beyond all compare. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, live to know you here on the earth. And I will feel no Oh, my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, you never let go through the cross. have any prayer requests that we might uh, share a time of prayer before you leave today. Anything that you would like us, or anyone you'd like us to pray for? Yes. Okay. Okay. Others. Okay, let's pray together. Lord, on this evening, there are many things going on in our lives, some that we're comfortable with and some that are making us squirm a bit. Perhaps we're struggling with relationships with roommates or there are things going on at home that have us a little anxious. We pray for comfort and peace for our students who are getting comfortable with schedules that are perhaps a little bit overwhelming as they worry about perhaps purchasing books or studying or getting all their homework done. But we know that there are some among us who have had injuries this uh, past week or past couple weeks, and so we pray for Adil and for Javon and Colton. We pray thinking about our good friend Jonathan Smith and his family. We pray celebrating for baby Avery James, who was baptized this day and with his parents. We give thanks to you. Lord, we think about the threats of war that seems to be ongoing uh, tonight with North Korea and with others being concerned around the world. So we pray for 
good conversation and negotiation to calm the winds of, of fire and, and uh, anger and war that's perhaps on the horizon. Tonight we think about folks who are struggling with forest fires out in the Los Angeles area or up in Oregon. We pray, Lord, thinking about all those who have been affected by Hurricane Harvey and pray for water and food and clothing and housing and, and relief and rescues. We pray for all those first responders who are giving of their time and their energy and their lives to, to get folks to safety. But we also think about the good uh, neighbors and friends and strangers who are reaching out to help one another. Lord, this evening we pray for the family of Jack Moore who passed away this day and we lift him up to you and Lord may you receive him into your open arms and hands and care for him but be with his family as well his children and his wife as they move through this incredibly difficult time of grief surround them with those who love love him love you and will help them move through this difficulty Think about students who are studying abroad, not just from Westminster, but from around the, the country and the world. And so we pray for them. We pray for safety and good decisions, and, and we pray for their families who are at home wondering and worrying about them. Together, O oh Lord, we pray that you will bless them with experiences that are transformative and give them the courage to continue to step out of their safety zones, out of their safe box here at Westminster and explore the world. Lord, all these things we lift up to you, knowing that you hear our prayers before we speak them. And so we would ask that you would hear each of us as we pray silently in our hearts. May you hear us, O oh Lord. And now, gracious God, Listen and hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, dear friends, I invite you to prepare to go out into the world. And as you do so, we have ice cream sundaes out there for you to enjoy tonight on your way out the door in celebration of Avery James baptism. We also want to invite you to come to chapel tomorrow at 1140. We'll be uh, reflecting and giving thanks uh, for the gift of Labor Day and for all those people who serve the world through their jobs. And, and the energy that comes with that. Um, during this upcoming week, there's a lot of uh, fellowship groups that are starting, and so we encourage you to find your spot and get yourself involved. So now, please stand for the benediction and then our final song. Again, we thank you all for special music this evening. You are Chosen me 
love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. That's it, sing it with us. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Come on, here we go. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Sometimes when we don't know what else to say, we just say, oh. 